Creatinine is a waste product of the muscles and we use it as an indirect way of basically measuring kidney function. So more to come on that when we get into the Q&A portion going on. But back to this idea was what this study showed was that you didn't have to treat that many patients, but putting people on a very low protein diet worked. Now, it's really hard to do a 0.3 gram per kilogram per day. We use 0.6 to 0.8 grams per kilogram per day, but we prefer a predominant plant-based diet. We tend to recommend tofu as the best type of protein source going on. And that's where we see that our patients do great. And how do we know? Because one of the things we look for is these things called indoxyl sulfate or p cresyl sulfate. These are uremic toxins. Now, where do these uremic toxins get produced? They get produced by your gut bacteria. So the gut bacteria is the source for all of these toxins. And what ends up happening there is the more you are predominantly a meat eater, the more you have these inflammatory type bacteria that are making these toxins going on. And all of these toxins, what they end up doing is they damage your gut microbiome, they create a leaky gut, they allows more toxins to go through the gut going on, and then they end up right to the kidneys. So as they get to the kidneys, they damage the tubules, they damage the glomerulus going on. Bottom line is they're damaging the kidneys. But what we find is, is that if you look at vegetarians or vegans, now we're not talking vegans who are eating plant-based burgers. We're talking whole food plant-based folks going on, meaning they're eating lots of fruits and vegetables. What we find is they have far less uremic toxins. In fact, when you look at places like Japan, where just a few decades ago, they didn't have enough dialysis machines, so they would ration, what they would do is put people on a very low protein diet. And of course, they weren't eating a lot of meat. So you would find that these people could last years without dialysis simply because of the fact that their protein intake was very low. They were predominantly vegetarians. Of course, they had to modify their diets to make sure that their potassium levels were being controlled. But overall, they could actually do really well. So vegetarians have less uremic toxins. The two that we measure is indoxyl sulfate and precresyl sulfate, but there's lots more ones that are out there. So we talked a little bit about soy protein. And what we said about soy was that soy tends to be awesome. We love soy. Tofu is great. And what we find is, is when you start to look at data on using tofu versus using animal type protein, you will find with tofu, there's less protein in the urine. So even when I see diabetics who are spilling protein in the urine, the first thing I always recommend to them is switch to tofu. And then same thing, because you're using plants, you're going to find that the serum phosphorus is going to be lower because once again, the absorption is dramatically lower when you compare plant-based phosphorus to animal-based phosphorus to inorganic phosphorus. All right. With fats, fats tends to be a hot topic. There are folks who say absolutely no fats whatsoever going on. There are folks who talk about the fact that saturated fat is not bad for you. We're just going to focus on fats in regards to kidney disease. And what we find is that even though there's no direct link between saturated fat and kidney disease, what we know is correlation studies show that higher intakes of saturated fat is linked to higher amounts of albuminuria. Whether that's an inflammatory cascade or not, I couldn't tell you, but most likely there's probably some truth to that going on. On the flip side to saturated fats, we don't talk enough about fiber. In fact, what we know is fiber is so important. Now, for those of people who are typical Americans and only get about 10 grams, which is the average for an American, 10 grams of fiber a day, you want to go up slowly because otherwise you'll create a bowel obstruction. But for most people, we don't come even near the amount of fiber you should be eating. How much fiber? It should be about 40 grams. And for those people who are obsessed about our paleo ancestors, they were eating close to 100 grams of fiber a day. So fiber, the beauty of it is, it's one of the most effective ways to lower the risk of kidney disease. Eat more fiber. How do you get more fiber? Fruits and vegetables fruits and vegetables, and fruits and vegetables. In fact, it doesn't take much. Once again, typical American only getting about 
10 grams. If you increase just five grams going on, just five, which is very little in terms of the overall burden, you can start to make a dent in the incidence of chronic kidney disease across the country going on. So what we know about fiber is, is because fiber has such a dramatic impact, every single American, in fact, every single individual in the world should really focus on trying to eat more fiber. The more you eat, the better you're going to do. Now, people talk about sugar all the time, but when it comes to chronic kidney disease, what we know is the more sugar you eat, eat or drink, the more likely you are to have protein in the urine. Protein in the urine, once again, is the biggest predictor of how fast you are going to progress to dialysis going on. And when it comes to chronic kidney disease, the more sugar you take, the more your incidence of developing chronic kidney disease goes. And that number continues to rise the more you end up drinking. So a lot of people I know think that just because sugar is bad, they think switching to non-nutritive sweetener, I use the term artificial sweetened, but the term really should be non-nutritive sweeteners because Splenda is included in this. So Stevia, Splenda, Aspartame, NutraSweet, Xylitol, Erythritol, all of these guys, the challenge you have is several fold. With artificial sweeteners, what you end up finding is that the risk of impacting your kidney function, meaning a drop in your kidney function, is substantial the more non-nutritive sweeteners you have. But non-nutritive sweeteners do so much damage to your body in a number of ways. They mess up your gut microbiome. They create the inflammatory gut microbiome, which then leads to what? You can have a leaky gut. You can start to create more insulin resistance. You can have more sugar that's floating around your bloodstream because you now have insulin resistance going on. You also have more insulin, which by the way, takes any excess calories you have, stores them as fat going on. And on top of all of this stuff, even things like stevia, which is anywhere between 200 to 400 times sweeter than sugar, when you take it, it completely transforms how sweet a regular strawberry tastes. So once you do that, you're going to find that tasting regular whole foods just don't taste the same anymore. This is why for us, one of the things that we recommend is getting over sugar does not mean going from something that's a little bad to something that's terrible. In other words, trying to cut your cocaine habit doesn't mean you should switch to heroin once a week because, hey, I'm not using cocaine anymore. So it's really important to be careful and mindful about the changes we look at making. So this is why all of these things, when we start to think about diet sodas, are very, very tricky, not just because the colored sodas like the darker colored have high contents of phosphorus, but also because of the fact that the artificial sweetened stuff matters. Now, when it comes to diet, we've been talking a lot about taking all this information and starting to put it together. And what we have basically come with the conclusion is, is that my message to all of you is, if you switch to plant-based diets, you're gonna do better. So that's where all the studies on kidney disease support. But here's where it's really important. There is so much confusion on what a plant-based diet is these days that I have to specify a whole food plant-based diet because a healthy plant-based diet is good, but an unhealthy plant-based diet is not just less good, it's actually terrible. And what we're finding is more and more people who are quote unquote going vegan unfortunately, are also becoming diabetics in the process, not because they're doing the right stuff for the environment and so forth, but because what they're picking is foods that are highly processed. Even though they're non-animal based, they're incredibly highly processed foods. And that's the challenge we're faced with. So keep that in mind as you start to see these packages, because look, you know, a lot of companies understand that there's a trend towards plant-based and they're capitalizing on that. And that's why we have to make sure that we're educated. And especially for our kids, it's even more important for us to get a little bit better at being able to read the labels going on. So once again, there is so much misinformation about kidney disease. And if we can start to shift people towards eating more whole foods, to sleeping more, to exercising more, to creating healthy relationships and practicing kindness and gratitude and following whole foods, you can go ahead and change. 
So the bottom line here is very simple is what we're asking folks to do is to eat food, not too much, mostly plants. I love this line by Michael Pollan. As you know, this has stood the test of time. And this is something that I highly recommend you guys think about as you're going with that. So with that, I want to stop right there. And I want to make sure now to take the opportunity to address all of your questions that you guys might have. Because the value in all of this work was really about taking the opportunity to answer any and all questions you guys have. <music>